In today's video, I want to talk about there's a popular opinion right now that you need to fence your stream corridors, keep livestock out of them, and let them grow up in trees to stop stream bank erosion. I'd like to challenge that theory a little bit. And to start out, I want to show you what happens to a stream that is fenced and allowed to grow up into brush. So this one here, as you can see, it's got trees along the side of it. Uh, this has been fenced for several years, like uh, probably 30 years this has been fenced out. Uh, we do occasionally run livestock in here, but for the most part, we didn't control it with fire, so we just let the trees grow up because that's what is good for stream bank to stop stream bank erosion is those big trees is the theory. So what happens over time is, you see this big tree, dead tree here behind me? and it's actually got a live tree even out in front of it. And you can see all the root systems starting to stick out of the bank here. And what's happening is, is that tree rots and the, the soil is washed away from the base of it. Someday that tree is gonna to topple over. And you can see he's already starting to lean towards the creek. He's starting to shift down this bank. And when he falls over, that root wad will come out of the bank and that's going to force that water in a channel between that root wad and that exposed bank. And what that causes is a lot of stream bank erosion right there behind it. And whenever you peel that first layer off, it just continues to peel off layers downstream to that same bank, giving you a vertical cut bank. And these trees are like, they, they do supply a lot of underground roots that help hold the soil, don't get me wrong but they also have a giant lever on top, the tree itself, that's constantly wanting them to fall over. And whenever it starts to undercut those. So with native plants, we can actually get a lot of the same root holding ability here where we've actually fixed one of these cut banks saw, caused by a tree. This one wasn't dead, it just got undermined and fell in. And it caused it to rip this bank out for, oh, we're looking at uh, 200 feet here. So it caused 200 foot a domino effect of trees falling off. We come in and we, we use some equipment and we actually planted a lot of native plants, native grasses. All these are palatable. The forbs are palatable and they also burn well, which the burning should help us keep the brush and the sycamore trees from coming back. So we've got this, we've got a lot of, lot of mass of plants above ground and roots below ground that are now holding this soil and we don't need those big trees growing up in it. We did, however, plant several willow trees in here and willows are more of a shrub. They're not gonna get to be a huge tree with a huge lever, L lever on top, the lever being the big tree top. They're just gonna kinda grow as a shrub. They're also very palatable livestock and wildlife. So this is what I would like to challenge people to think about in their streams before they go to fencing those streams in. Now obviously anytime you're going to do something like this with a forage and you're going to use livestock on it, you need to think very hard about your rotational system and your management. You know, you got to rotate animals in and out, have rest periods and regrowth. I'm going to walk down here if you get a little bit more footage. What's happened here is you see this cut bank here below me and this cut bank was created by one of those big trees that fell off the bank in the root wad. And you go back to like three years ago is when this big tree fell over that started to unravel this bank. And three years ago, I could have walked out another 10 or 12 feet. This, this grass this, that I'm standing on would have went out another 10 to 12 feet. You see that big root wad right there? What that big root wad is, that was a tree that was growing when this bank was over here 10 to 12 feet. So it was growing virtually where I'm standing, only 10 to 12 feet out at the edge, the old edge of the stream bank is what I'm trying to say. That tree toppled over one day. It eroded too much out of the roots underneath. That tree was still alive and green and growing. It was a big old red oak tree. It just fell over. When it just fell over, it blocked the stream channel 
with the root wad and the trunk of the tree and the top of that tree completely block the rest of the stream channel except for the narrow gap from where it fell out. So we had a four foot wide chute that was like eight foot deep now, six to eight foot deep, a vertical bank with a root wad. The roots still hold the soil just like they are today. You can see it there. This has been there for four years through many floods, but what didn't have the roots anymore was the vertical bank on this side. So it went from a four foot wide chute to a 20 foot wide. And you can see where it's just started then to unravel this whole corner, this whole bend from one big raw spot, force of water through it, went both ways up and downstream, just unraveling the vegetation along this bank. And as you see this sycamore right here, it's starting to undermine its roots. It's, this one's still alive. Uh, we left it standing and we cut one off on each side of it. We don't treat these stumps when we cut them off. We don't mind them sprouting back. And we don't mind that root system staying alive and growing and helping support it. What we're removing is the big lever on top. And by removing it, it doesn't then want to topple off the bank. Over time, this root wad will wash out and be gone but it's not going to fall in and be anchored here. Uh, the other thing, when you remove that lever, you take those leaves, that canopy away, and you start to grow grass again and forbs on the bank that you can't grow in a shady environment, such as you have over here, where it's all, um, all canopied in and shaded. So you can see here beside me where the uh, bank is more shaded and we don't have that much species. It's also very vertical. We don't have that much ground vegetation growing on it. And that's due to this sycamore tree and the roots and it's eroding away this layer where the vegetation would grow. And then up here where we don't have as much shade, we've removed the big trees out of here. This is very thick, dense. When this floods, this just all lays down downstream and makes a protective layer as the water runs across. And then it stands back up. It may stay laid over if it's a really big flood, but it doesn't matter. And it also collects all that sand and silt moving down the creek, gets funneled down into this grass that's so thick and it can't get out. Then these plants just absorb that. They just grow on top of it. They build it up and it just builds a richer environment and they get bigger and bigger. And it's hard to walk through. This is a very dense stand and we're right here just right at the water line. And we could have this protective layer growing right down to the water.